He was only on the pitch for 90. Gareth, Gareth, Gareth. Is he going on the PGA Tour? Is that how long that tour is? It feels like it. Oh, goodness me. Hi, guys, and welcome back to Tottenham Hotspur. So... Uh, if you're enjoying this so far, do leave a like on the video. That really does help out the channel, helps new people find it, and uh, it's kind of important at this time of year. So, um, today, we're going to be doing four matches, all of which you're going to see. I think that's kind of cool. I like showing this sort of stuff more, particularly as we can all learn together probably what not to do. Let me be an example to you, but in reverse. We also had our um, EFL Cup draw, which is going to be Swindon Town. So that should, and it's at home too again. So it should give us an opportunity to rotate squad. And that's very important right now. Something we're going to be doing today against Lincoln is that. Uh, we're going to be rotating the squad around for this because we've got a massive game against Burnley at the weekend. Burnley, who you may think, okay, but it's Burnley. Yeah, they nearly created a, a three. Uh, they nearly had an XG of nearly three in their first match. Now they did still lose. So perhaps that doesn't mean anything. But I'm concerned if they're going to do that against us because I feel like we might not be able to quite handle that. So tactical meeting. Reduce defend duties. I think I'm just going to stick with things as I am. Um, I am actually going to listen to the assistant here, although I haven't actually seen quite where he's going to put this in. But we'll do it anyway, and we can adjust it on the fly. Work born to the box. Again, something we'll have a look at during the game. It's going to be important to keep, even against weaker sides, to do tactical tweaks, because I think what it can do is kind of give you an, a situation where, in a perfect scenario of the match, what you could get out of your tactic. And I think that's why these games still have a an importance. And also getting through. So... What does he want to do? Okay, so Harry Kane isn't start. Then again, we really did struggle to fill out the, the squad in terms of get everybody in. And as a result, we had to leave Vinicius out because there just wasn't room for people. And it's a real problem. So Harry Kane may actually have to start here, which is a frustrating one, but we'll rest him out for the Swindon game. Bergwijn's fresh enough to play there, I would say. Um, Lamella... Lamella can still play because Bale will be back soon, so we'll be able to rotate that around a little bit. Have to Soko there and then Winks. Uh, Toby is not playing right... Oh, Wow. Injuries have really cost us at the moment, it would seem. So as much as Jaffet Tanganga is not ideal for that role, we'll let him do it for now. And we're also going to start Ben Davies on the left-hand side. Just to rest a few players out, give some people a bit of a rest. Some people will have to just play, but we'll keep the others on the bench. This might actually be a really cool thing, this feature. If I tick next match only, will it then revert back to my old squad lineup for the next match? I want to see if this works, because that's a really good idea for when rotating teams around, because it's a bugger sometimes to do that, like, meticulously without wasting too much time. I'm going to put Okadina on the bench here as well, because it will give us a bit of backup for Tanganga if we should need it, although I think he's more of a centre-back. Yeah, that could be said. Still not at all confident in our um, set-piece instructions yet. But we'll work on that over time when we see what works from corners. We'll just try a few different things out. I locked out massively on FM20, but the first thing I did on corners literally worked perfectly, and I used it the entire season. Leave them in no doubt. Okay, the players still aren't having that yet. Make a difference. Okay, Ben. Good, you got me, bruv. That's better. Let's, let's hands on hips the last one. Way Harry Kane liked a bit of that. He likes a bit of sass manager. Love it. Right, let's go. I think all we really want out of this match is a solid, comfortable victory. Get a few players some match fitness back that might not have started before. Uh, allow a few players like Son and whatnot, who generally speaking, you know, exert a lot of energy. Let them have a little bit of a rest as well. Uh, shame that Harry Kane has to start here, really. I would have preferred to have allowed someone like Carlos Vinicius to play. But I think we might get another registration place later anyway. Bergwijn into the box, pulls it back for Kane, and Lamella's straight through. Inside a minute, Spurs have the lead. Really nice football again. This is what I mean about playing through the centre with those inside forwards. It creates that sort of front three that Spurs actually seem to play with quite a lot, because they're bowling towards again inside the fullbacks, and then you just sort of seem to be clustering in this middle area. Lovely ball through from Harry Kane. That 18 passing has really been showing off there, and it just allows the fullbacks, when we do get forward, loads and loads of space if we hold the ball up a little bit more. Great result. Very good start for us. I'm not sure what I'd expect on scoreline. 4 or 5 nil would probably be the... Like, I would consider a 4 or 5 nil result a decent one for us, I'd say. Lamella, can he cut back inside? He's going to go all the way through and finds the shot from a tight angle. No one really there to support him. Bergvine, loads of space if he can find Lamella. Surely he has to. Oh, goes for La Celso. Winks, Lamella. Oh, nice. Tanganga with the shot. Maybe overplayed it a little bit there. Tanganga's ball in, and there he is, Harry Kane. His second goal of the season in all competitions were two goals to the good here at Lincoln. What I might do later in the second half is just get Harry Kane off if we're like three or four nil up and just put someone, even if they're slightly out of position, just to sort of fill the slot, frankly. I thought we'd overplayed it a little bit to begin with, but a lovely ball in from Tanganga. Kane rising highest in between the two defenders. I love that animation. Oh, God. I'm enjoying the crap out of this new match. Engine as it deflects off the post. I, it feels so, so, so much better. And SI and the devs deserve humongous credit for the incredible job they've done. And this is only the beta. Think about that. It's easily the best beta I've ever played for FM. Um, I've not. I've only had one bug so far as Lamella gets to the back post, and it is 3-0 now. Sorry, I thought I'd take a minute there just to discuss that as Lamella grabs his second goal of the night as well. Yeah, so it's sort of showing off what we want to be doing. Alla alla pulling all of our um, players so narrow allows lots of space for the fullbacks to get those balls in, and it allows us a lot of... Um, 
almost like a, a central overload a lot of the time, and it seems to work. I think we're headed towards that four or five nil quite comfortably as Tanganga's down the wing again, and it's Kane again. Oh, wow, he didn't take the shot on. Bergvine. Oh, nice again. The way that Bergvine, instead of just having a meaningless loopy header, knocked it down for a player coming into the box. The fact that when Kane got his back to goal, he didn't try some ridiculous shot that would have never gone in. He relayed the ball and allowed the move to continue. It is so much more realistic. For LaSalle, so oh, Sissoko's going to get the show away, and it's a great strike from Musa Sissoko. 4-0 on the stroke of half-time. Lovely old job. Maybe subs at half time. Very nice little pick out here from Lacelso actually to find that ball in between the three of them. Loads of room for Sissoko and it's a great long range effort for 4-0. Well, all in all, can't really be displeased with that. 4-0 up at half time. XG of 1.92. Pretty damn solid. We're, we're looking good. Oh no, it's only Oh no, it's only Lincoln, but pleased with it. Lamella, Mora, and Bergwine. Tight angle and a great save from Lane. Good stuff. Lamella again. You see the creeping fullback there of Tanganga flying into that space. He's done excellently tonight. Great ball. And Dominic can ping it and he's hit the bar and Lamella on the rebound. That's a bit fortunate, but a lovely strike from Tangi and Dombele. And there is a hat trick for Eric Lamella. You love to see it. Eric the apple. It wasn't the poison apple this time. It was a very, very sexy apple. I don't know where this analogy is going. What a hit this is from Ndombele. Was that first time? Oh, what a strike. It's 5-0. Lamella's popped it in. That's good. Ndombele slips it through for Bergvine. Great save. Oh, Godina with the ball around the side for La Celso. Can he square it? No, but he might be able to find a... Oh, pulls it back and winks with the strike. But there we go. Lincoln nil. Or well, Lincoln Red Imps nil. Spurs five. Now, obviously, we were expected to win the game very, very comfortably. But we did exactly that. Uh, kept all the ball that we wanted. Didn't let them have a shot. Had a ton of chances ourselves. And then finished five of them. That's the kind of the main thing. We had a few little opportunities towards the end of that second half. We just weren't able to convert with some of the substitutions we made. Happy with Eric Lamella. It's a good result for us, really. Fresh legs, testing out more tactical changes. I like it. So we're going to play Shamrock Rovers in the next round. Wow, that's like literally going to be today, in fact, it would seem. Yeah, loads of matches have been rearranged. I've switched the set pieces around a little bit. So we're now aiming them at the far post. See if that can make any difference. If not, we'll try a few different things, move some people around a little bit just to cluster certain areas. See if we come up with anything that just looks more effective, really. So one thing you notice about this Spurs save as well is the episodes may be slightly longer as I obviously you want to be showing more games in an episode, but you can imagine that actually showing the matches takes up more time, but I don't want to cut out too much of it. So we may be pushing to more towards 20 minutes for a lot of these episodes now. And I hope you guys are okay with that. It will resume back to the normal length with Bolton probably. I really like the fact that it does actually present the uh, analyst report in the news article and you can see the type of football they want to play in the graphic and it's way easier to just get an idea of what they want to do. Now Burnley says Route 1. Not a huge surprise. The thing is though, as much as they do play Route 1, they haven't actually got the, so much pace in behind because Chris Wood is not the quickest of strikers if he is going to start up front for Burnley so we could probably get away with our current system still and just have to hope that our centre-backs can handle those aerial balls interesting so I guess that only works for tactics then I think in order to do this bit here it has to be on this screen although the tire marking thing could be something we could move to during the match I'm going to do the team selection advice in this screen instead and just adjust on the fly because I really I like La Celso here I do but I feel like the S Sissoko is just better for that role and it might have to be Eric Lamella though that being said he has recovered amazingly well I'm going to start with Ndombele in here this is kind of my the best lineup minus Gareth Bale so the bench would be Bergvine, Davies, Lo Celso, Vinicius, Sanchez, Winks, and Lucas Moura. Excellent. Looks stronger. Right, let's test ourselves. This is good signs. Green means good. At home against Burnley, you'd expect the win. I mean, there's the instant long ball over the top for Lloris to go and collect. He's going to be doing that a bit tonight, I sense. Lots of overlaps here, and immediately Aurier with that more dynamic run than perhaps you would have seen out of Tanganga. And a great strike from Musa Sissoko, and inside three minutes, Sissoko scored his second banger of the season. Spurs with the early lead. Very, very important. You don't want to be playing from behind against Burnley. You want to make sure that you get on the front foot nice and early. Love Lovely little pass there from, oh God, it just, the passing just looks so crisp, but what a lovely pick out from Oreo to the edge of the box for Sissoko, through a crowd of bodies, and we lead 1-0. Very good start. Game's been quite dead since then, it would seem, but that's fine. Oh, lordy lord, what are we doing here? Goodmanson, and it's a good save for Lloris. What on earth was that from us? That was just really bad from us in general. Lamella and Dombele, lots of space on the edge of the box again for Sissoko, and this time he couldn't quite replicate the form. Oreo again, Deli Alley, and a good save from Nick Pope. There's a lot of space in that middle area. It's actually a breakaway for Burnley here. Long ball should be easily dealt with, though, by Eric Dyer. Good stuff. And Sissoko again in space. Out for Aurier. That same play is working a lot so far. Aurier's delivery and Lamella's block. So it's just going to keep running with it. They are not stopping. Oh, what a goal! Bloody hell. Tottenham 2, Burnley nil. Do you remember that goal that Son scored against uh, Burnley? I think it was last season. Look at that. He picks the ball up on the left back spot. Dribbles the entire way across the pitch. This is nothing like that, of course. It's just impressive. Takes on a couple of players and just thinks, you know what? I'm going to have a bang on that. And it's 2-0 before halftime. Son's first goal of the season. That is a great first half from us, despite not creating the quality. Son's delivery. Came with the header and a great save from Pope. That's more like it. All in all, I'll take that first half. I think 2-0 is a bit fortunate for us. But regardless, we've got a very good lead and we're not cr giving up many chances. Stevens. Okay, Burnley playing some better football here. He could get that ball in behind and he has. And it's a great goal for Ashley Barnes. And Burnley, really, their first opportunity of the match and they've taken it. 
they broke through us and we weren't able to regroup after that. The moment we tried that and then all of a sudden there just seemed to be these little gaps emerging and it's just nice one touch stuff. Unfortunately, is isn't trapped properly. I think by Eric Dyer, it's just a great finish from Ashley Barnes. Okay, we've got to be careful. Sissoko again. We seem to have woken up a little bit now since some substitutions have happened. Regalon. Out for Aurier on the right-hand side. Edge of the box for Ndombele. Nice little one-touch stuff. Another ball again. Aurier into the box. Can he square it? Yes, he can. And it's 3-1. Harry Kane at the back post. That should wrap up the tie for the tie. The match for us. Another goal for Harry Kane. Really nice football there. Those little substitutions just seem to make us a bit more dynamic again. Um, bringing on La Celso and... Uh, Lucas Moura just seemed to give us a bit of energy back. It's a lovely ball across from Serge Aurier, though, and a simple little finish for Harry Kane. Good win. You may have missed my face cam for that because I just realised it turned itself off, which is just terrific. So apologies for that in advance. Or rather, for the past. <laughs> so Spurs 3, Burnley 1. Oh, God, what are you doing there? Whoa, a little mistake from the defence there. All in all, I think we've had a good performance there. Created a decent number of chances, took a few of them, albeit from long range, had some credit, some good stuff. Sure, we gave up a goal to Burnley in this match, but I think we were pretty solid and deserved the result in the end. So good win for us. Two wins out of two in the league. It's a good start. Okay, so Shamrock Rovers. I made a slight change to the squad. Uh, I brought in Vinicius and I took out Huybjerg because he wasn't going to play probably, but we do need another striker for this so that we can rest Harry Kane out a little bit, which is exactly what I'm going to do. Bale is back, but I'm going to bring him off the bench for this one. Okay, so the bench will be Lucas Moura, Regalon, Son Heung-min, Kane, Sanchez, Sissoko, and Gareth Bale. As you can see, the team, Vinicius, Bergwijn, Ali, Lamella, Lo Celso, Ndombele, Tanganga right back again, because why the hell not? We haven't got Doherty back yet. Dyer, Alderweireld, Davis, and Lloris. Should be comfortable, but we'll see. We should just be able to overpower them by sheer strength, but we've got to be careful that we don't get complacent, so that's why we've got the quality on the bench, should we need it. Uh, I'd like to make sure that we keep these guys fresh and ready for the Premier League and whatnot. Deli Ali could maybe slip the ball through here, and he does. Vinicius has made a run behind, and it's a good effort, but it's just wide. Nice. Slipping through some challenges. Can he pull it across? And he does, but Bergvine can't quite get there. Deli Ali's looking good so far, though. Davis. Carlos Vinicius. Good save again. Tanganga with a longer pass this time. Perhaps not the best, but Ndombele's intercepted. Here we go. A bit of a counter-attack. Maybe he can slip it through for Vinicius Jr. again. He tries to. Lo Celso. Bergwijn's around the side. And there we go. It's 1-0 Spurs. That's what we needed. Steven Bergwijn. Glad to see him get off the mark for us this season. Lovely little ball through, I think, from Lo Celso. We do look good on the counter-attack. One thing I really like about the new FM21 match engine is that... What would have to happen is that when your team got a counter-attacking opportunity before, they would still kind of resort to the same style of play you do when you were in possession normally. Whereas I feel like teams are more likely to abandon their instructions and just bomb forward on the counter now, which is brilliant. It's what you want. It's what happens in real life. Just to regroup, try and work this through the middle. It's quite a congested area, but there's still a lot of bodies around. Bergwijn's in there again, and he scored another one. Steven Bergwijn is running the show with a couple of good strikes for us so far. Hopefully going to send us comfortably through to the next round of this tournament, which is exactly what we wanted to see right now. Very congested area, but all of a sudden... We just managed to create that little bit of space with an overload towards this far side here. And it's just a great strike from Bergwijn, to be fair. Keeper's doing nothing about that. 2-0. And Bergwijn's intercepted again. Can he go for the hat-trick today? Will he slip it through the side for Vinicius Jr.? And that, not Vinicius Jr., I wish. Vin Carlos Vinicius makes it 3-0 to Spurs. Bergwijn's been brilliant today. We've done a, it's been a totally different style of football from us today, despite playing the exact same tactic. It's like they've adapted slightly. We're winning them off them in good areas. Lovely little passing round behind. Lovely little run from Vinicius. And it's a simple finish from him. And it's now 3-0. Good stuff. I'd argue, if anything, we've actually been better in this game than we were against the Lincoln Red Imps. It's a good sign. Second half has very much simmered down. Uh, <laughs> haven't created as much. I guess the team are just getting a bit complacent. We might make a couple of subs in a minute just to make sure that we maintain some legs as Lamella makes it 4-0 there at the back post. We've scored from an indirect free kick. That's a nice sign. Lamella's fourth goal of the season as well. He's got four of them in Europe too. A lovely little ball in here from Ben Davies. Totally unmarked at the back post is Lamella, 4-0. One thing I also really like is goalkeeper ratings. They're fixed, quite simply. Can't say fairer than that. They fix goalkeeper ratings. Oh, it's a good ball through, actually. Lloris has got to be big here. And he is. Good stuff from Hugo Lloris. No, yeah, that's a great save from Hugo Lloris. Very much importantly needed to happen. I want to keep a clean sheet today, and his rating has been bumped up accordingly. You'll love to see. Well, all in all, pretty straightforward. Second half, we kind of simmered off a little bit, but we still won the match 4-0 in the end, and that's kind of what matters, really, in the grand scheme of things. Right, Swindon Town of the Cup, probably going to continue the rotation stuff because we've got City soon. So, the City game has now been pushed back into the middle of October as a result of us getting through to the next round of the Europa League. So, this will be the final game of today's video because it is... September as a whole. Uh, we'll see how we do. It's, there's a lot of fixtures coming up, and I'm starting to worry about the length of this uh, series, potentially, at this rate. They want us to switch things around, but honestly, I'm tempted to go with the exact same lineup as the last game, except maybe starting Gareth Bale to get some fitness levels back, and possibly starting Harry Winks in the midfield instead. Uh, actually, maybe doing Sissoko as well. <laughs> says the same, it's the same lineup, he says, and then immediately changes it. Doherty's still not ready. Keep the bench the same, though. I can't remember where, I don't think the board are particularly bothered about this tournament either. So as a result of that, I won't be too bothered if we do get knocked out of it. Potentially, as we've got the lead, I think that's going to be offside, though. Yes, I think Deli Ali is going to be ruled offside there, sadly. 
We're just going to keep rotating teams around for this tournament and see how far we get, basically, by playing different players. <laughs> Might even just start bringing in some of the other 23s, to be fair. Tanganga. Sissoko! Lovely! This time, instead of being our long ranger, he's got to the box and scored his third goal of the season already. Musa Sissoko is doing mad things for us so far, and we are about to potentially be on the verge of getting yet another win. We've actually not done anything except win so far, which is a very good sign, considering I'm still very unsure about us tactically at the moment, but we're getting in the right direction. That's the main thing. <laughs> There's a test for you. Gareth, 19 minutes into him starting a game finally as we nursed him back in, didn't play him too much, gave him a substitute appearance for 10 minutes, and now he's hurt himself again. Gareth, uh, I assume he's just got a round of golf book later. Lovely work. Ben Davies now. Lots of space for him. Can he find the right pass though? But he does and Bergvine, good save. So half time, fairly comfortable from us. We're not giving Swindon anything. We are creating a few little things. Only lead by a goal to nil. Maybe a little unlucky. Nah, I'd say it's probably fair actually. I would quite like a second goal just to settle the nerves in this one a little bit to make sure that we're going to just sort of see this game out relatively comfortably. They don't look threatening, but it only takes one chance, unfortunately. Sissoko's just driving into that little wide area there. Maybe he could whip, whip a look. One, and Vinicius is there, and now it's 2-0 Tottenham. That's the goal we needed. Vinicius has done a good job uh, covering for Harry Kane at the moment while we make sure that Kane isn't getting overly played, uh, particularly in games where we could avoid using him. Because as good as he is, you want to make sure that you kind of wrap him in cotton wool from time to time to make sure that you can use him for the important ones. Good header there from Vinicius. From Vinicius, it's 2-0. Tanganga. Lucas Mora. Can he flip it around? He might win a penalty. Great ball in. Oh, it is a penalty. In fact, it might well be a penalty. Oh, no. It's going to be the whole was it in the box, which means it never is. Unless they've changed that for FM21. Go on. Do me something cool. Okay, so that part of the game is still annoyingly in there, which is a shame. Oh, he scored from the free kick anyway. Okay, well, we'll take that. But you know how it used to happen on FM20, where if there was a penalty, give, if there was a decision on the edge of the box, it was always outside the box, basically. And that seems to be still remaining. But another goal for Musa Sissoko. Four for the year now. Good start. Once again, another good win. I think we really kicked on in the second half of this match. Looked pretty solid. 3-0 victory. Once again, clean sheet. Uh, we still only conceded one goal this season. We're on the right track. Swindon committed a lot of fouls. We're getting possession, pass completion. It's working. We're actually doing all right. Gareth Bale has a hip injury. A completely different injury. It's just a brand new, completely different injury. Two to five months out. He was only on the pitch for 90. Gareth, Gareth, Gareth. Is he going on the PGA Tour? Is that how long that tour is? It feels like it. Oh, goodness me. I just told him that his playing time would remain the same and promised him when he returned to the team. And he's disappointed because he's not interested in my sympathy. Sure, whatever. I'm going to take a 9-iron to his car. So, there we have it. We've started pretty strongly. Uh, shaky first game against Leicester, obviously, in the last video. But since then, we've scored a minimum of three goals in every single match so far. Now, of course, the quality of opposition is lower. We sure. We know that. But still very, very pleased with our start, quite frankly. We've only conceded one goal so far, and we're scoring for fun in places. And that's definitely a good thing to be doing no matter who you're playing. So, next episode, it's not going to be all of these, because that would be way too much to cram into one. So we may do four or three. Uh, I'm not entirely sure just yet. We'll figure it out, because there's probably going to be more matches in there as well. So, if you've enjoyed this, and I hope you have, drop a like on the video. That'll be tremendous if you're new to the channel uh subscribe that'd be awesome as well i stream on twitch on tuesdays and thursdays and usually at the weekends as well so go follow there too and i'll join you guys tomorrow as we will finally get into a bit more of a run of premier league matches you hope but we are still two for two in the league too which is a good start and that was a tough sentence to say so i'll see you guys soon thank you so much for watching hold your gun capybara bye-bye